Okay, guys. Uh, in last class, we were discussing uh, projectiles that were launched horizontally. That is to say that the initial velocity was entirely in the x direction. So we had balls rolling off of tabletops, and um, we had uh, balls being thrown uh, horizontally from the top of a cliff. So they had no, in other words, they had no y velocity. They had none of the velocity initial was in the y direction. But now I'd like to think about uh, projectiles that are launched uh, at an angle. Um, so th these are uh, projectiles launched at angles. At an angle. Trying the, uh, trying the, uh, the white background today. We'll see how we like that. Projectiles launched at an angle. So. This is going to be a little bit trickier. There's an extra step um, involved in doing these problems uh, because, again, the initial y velocity is not zero. So, for instance, um, let's imagine a scenario. We'll just get right into a problem, and you'll, you'll quickly see uh, the difference here. Let's imagine that we've got the ground here. Here's the ground. And I'm going to imagine that we've got somebody kicking a soccer ball up at an angle flat ground, level ground here, and here's this person, and they're going to kick this soccer ball. Here's this ball. Here's the ball. And so let's say that this soccer ball is kicked, let's say, at an angle, theta, above the horizontal. So this, this angle is above the ground, right, with respect to the ground. And it's kicked at some, some velocity v initial. Okay, so launch v initial at some angle theta, and let's let's go ahead and flesh that out. Let's say that the uh, initial velocity it's kicked with is 25 meters per second, and let's say it's kicked at an angle of I don't know 38 degrees. Okay, and the we, you can probably get some kind of a uh, an intuition for what's going to happen here. The ball is going to take a path that looks like this. It's going to go up and then down like this. Something like a parabola. And in fact, next class, we're going to see that this is in fact exactly a parabola. Um, I'm going to prove that to you. Although, as I drew it, it doesn't look all that much like a parabola. Let's try that again. It's a little bit more like a parabola, I guess. Um, and so there are a few things that we might ask. Right, The ball is going to end up over here. There's a few things that we might ask. The first thing that you might ask is, how far does it go? So, um, how far does it go? Does the ball go? And what really we're looking for there is, is what we call the range. What is, we're looking for what's the range of the ball. And the range of the ball means delta x. How far is the range? Range is defined as delta x. So what we're, what we're looking for here is what is this delta x? from the starting point to where it lands on the ground. And right away, hopefully we can see that the equation for delta x, hopefully we remember, is v sub x times t. Right? This is our constant velocity equation, uh, v sub x times t. Um, and uh, th don't get this confused. We're going to have different equations right in the y direction. Remember, I can use the constant velocity equation when I'm in the x direction because velocity in the x direction is constant. But immediately we have to ask ourselves, well, what is v sub x? What is this? Because this isn't given. This is not 25 meters per second. The 25 meters per second is the total velocity, which is launched at an angle. So to figure out v sub x, I've got to do a little bit of work. Um, so in particular, v sub x is going to be this, right? It's going to be the component of the velocity in the x direction. There's also a component of the velocity that's in the y direction. And in order to figure out these two velocity components, I'm going to have to use this angle theta. So our vector math is going to come in, uh, come, come in handy here. So I'm going to say v sub x is equal to v cosine theta, right? Since, since theta is given relative to the horizontal, the x component is the adjacent leg, so I use cosine. And this is going to be 25 cosine 38. Um, which I've done out, that's, that's about 19.7. So this right here is 19.7. That's v sub x. v sub y is going to be 
25 sine 38, V sine theta, 25 sine 38, which I've done out and determined that's 15.4. That's going to be important in a minute, so I'll write that out. Okay, so here are, this is the initial y velocity right here, and this is the x velocity. Now remember, this is going to be constant. This one's going to, this one isn't going to change, right? The 19.7 will remain throughout the entire time. This one will change because it's in the y direction, so there's some acceleration in the y direction. So let's go back to calculating delta x. Well, delta x, we said was v sub x times t. So that's going to be, in this case, v sub x we found 19.7 times t. But in order to figure out t, I've got to, I've got to think about uh, the displacement in the y direction, right? It's the y dimension that, it, that, that determines how long the ball is going to be in the air for. So if, before, I can, before I can go any further, I've got to figure out what t is, right? And once I know t, then I can plug it in and calculate. So now we have to find t. Uh, so finding t comes from delta y. Well, first of all, let's figure out what is our delta y. Well, it starts on the ground, it ends on the ground, so delta y equals zero. And what's our equation for delta y? Well, remember, I'm gonna, I'll write it over here. Uh, when you're in the y direction, you need to use an acceleration equation. So our, acceler our displacement with acceleration equation looks like this, v initial t plus one half a t squared, remember that equation? one of our kinematic equations. This is the equation we're going to use, but I call delta x delta y, because I'm in the y direction. And the acceleration, remember, is now g, and the v initial is only v initial in the y direction. So that's the equation I'm going to use here. And I'm going to say delta y equals zero, and this zero is equal to the v initial in the y direction, right? And what did we find that was? That was 15.7. So zero equals 15.7 t plus one half negative 9.8 times t squared. Okay, so I've just used this equation. The v initial is 15.7. The acceleration is negative 9.8, and the delta y is zero. And remember, the delta y is zero because it begins and ends on the ground. So now this is a quadratic equation. I'll write it again. Zero equals 15.7t plus one half times negative 9.8 is minus 4.9t squared. Okay, and this is a quadratic, which means there are going to be two roots. Okay, which if you think about it, makes sense. Because what, what is this equation telling me? This equation is saying, uh, what are the times at which the ball is on the ground? Well, it starts on the ground and it ends on the ground. So I have to solve this quadratic. I could use the quadratic formula, but I don't have to. I can factor out a t. I can say 0 equals t times 15.7 minus 4.9t. 4.9t. And I can see the roots now. It's very easy to see. The two roots are going to be 0, t equals 0. And then the other root is going to be uh, 15.7 divided by 4.9, and that's 3.14. Okay, so this zero, the first root, that's not what we're looking for. That's when you kick the ball, right? The moment the ball is kicked, that's t equals zero, and indeed the ball is on the ground. It's this one that we're interested in, right? That's when the, this guy right here, this is when the ball lands, 3.14 seconds later. And so now I can finish the first question, I can plug this guy in right there, and I can say 19.7 times 3.14, and that's going to give me my total horizontal range, which in this case is about 62 meters. Final answer. So this distance is 62 meters from here all the way over to there. 62 meters, okay? So that's the first sort of question that might be asked. Um, now, I, I wanna point out that there could be a problem, I'm not gonna do a problem like this just yet, but we will see one in class where the delta y is not zero, right? The, this problem was made a little bit easier because the delta y was zero, but if this, if this ball were, for instance, kicked off the top of a cliff, 
then the delta y would not be zero. And it's not much harder, but the math ends up getting a little sloppier because the quadratic, you can't just factor like this. You end up having to solve it another way. But let's get back to, to the problem, and I'm going to ask another question. The next question I'm going to ask is, how high does the ball go? How high does the ball go? And uh, let's make sure we understand what I'm asking. I'm asking how high does the ball go, right? What, what am I looking for there? I'm looking for this distance. I don't really like that color green. Let's I'm looking for this distance. What is this delta y? Right at the maximum point right here. Now, um, in order to do this problem, we need to recognize something. At the very, very top, at this point right here, vy is zero. Right? The, I want to make a. And I, I want to be clear here. The the total velocity at this point is not zero. Right? The y velocity is, but remember the ball here has, still has some x velocity, right? The ball is still moving horizontally at our x velocity, which is 19.7. It just has, it just turns out it has no y velocity, right? The, the y velocity, which started at 15.7, has diminished down to zero at the very, very top. And that's going to be an important um, piece of information for solving this question of how high does the ball go. Um, well, how would we do this? Uh, your, your first instinct might be, okay, well, maybe I can figure out the time it takes to get to the top, which you could. You could figure out the time. It's going to turn out to be exactly half of this time. It's going to be half of 3.14. Um, so you could use, you could go back and have used this equation to find time. Um, v final y equals v initial y plus gt. V final is zero, V initial is, is uh, 15.7 minus 9.8 T, and you could find T. You could then plug T into this equation to find delta X, right? Once you found that time, you could use this equation again. Plug that T in, you know V initial Y, you know T, you know G, and so you could solve it that way. I want to point out that there's a quicker way to do the problem, which is to use this equation v final y squared equals v initial y squared plus 2 times g times delta y. And in case that looks like you've never seen it before, that's this equation rewritten, right? I'll rewrite it over here. We used to call this equation v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. But again, since I'm talking about the vertical equation, I'm throwing a subscript y in here subscript y in here, I'm calling a g, and I'm calling delta x delta y. Okay, so that's, that's where this equation is coming from. And this will allow me to do the problem in one step. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I know v final y is 0, I know v initial y is 15.7, I, I know g is 9.8, so I can go ahead and say delta y, I'm just going to solve this explicitly before I plug in the, the values, is going to be v final y squared minus v initial y squared divided by 2g. Okay, so right there, I know all of these values, so I can go ahead and solve now. I can say delta y is the final velocity of y squared, that's 0 squared minus the initial, which was this 15.7 right here, that was the initial y, minus 15.7 squared over 2 times negative 9.8 squared. It's important that you remember that g is negative because if you didn't, you'd end up getting a negative delta y out of this thing, which would make no sense, right? If you got a negative value, that would imply that the maximum height was below the starting point, which that I think is pretty clearly nonsensical. So you do this out and you should get about 12 meters. I think mean, it ends up being 12.1 meters. Final answer, okay? So we were able to now do that just in one step. So this height right here, this delta y, is 12, sorry, 12.1 meters. All right, so that's a, an introduction to these problems where projectiles are launched at an angle. Um, 
the, uh, the main difference here is uh, that the initial y velocity is not zero, and moreover, you have to find, in many cases, you need to find the x and y velocities from the get-go. Um, I will point out that it could be the case um, where the, the projectile is launched down at an angle. You can go through the exact same logic and, and work through a, a problem where the projectile is launched at an angle downward. Sometimes the delta y, I mentioned, sometimes the delta y is not zero, so we will see some tricky problems where delta y is not zero. Um, but in general, the problems have this form, so we'll, uh, we'll be do, doing more practice with this in class tomorrow.